What's up guys, Tim Halstead here for another episode of Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to Pro Stock Mania Returns. Now here's the scoop. I kind of changed the name of the channel to Drag Boss Garage because, I don't know, there's lots of things going on. This channel's growing pretty fast and I'm trying to keep up with it and actually try to move in a different direction to try to encompass with other people that are thinking the same way that I am and that are doing similar type of builds and hot rod type stuff. So I'm gonna kind of expand. I was approached by Yellow Terror to be a spokesperson here in the US just to kind of talk about the rocker arms, um, give a little video on it, and they would hook me up with a set of 1.8 rockers, which I, I would put on the 409. I'd like to try that, because that's gonna make the cam in the 750 lift when I did all the math. And I can afford the coil bind, I don't have coil bind issues, and I got enough piston to valve clear. So that's something to think about. So this episode here, Pro Stock Mania Returns is kind of bringing in some more information that I got on some Dino Don cylinder heads, Iron 4B Cleveland heads with the high ports and also the UR19. Now here's a couple examples of the intakes I have. I'm going to make a whole nother video series on Pro Stock tunnel ramps. That's going to be separate, just kind of focus on that. But the ones here are from pictures I got from Ben Hoffman and it really shows you the amount of time that they put into these cylinder heads when they had nothing back then. They couldn't order anything. They made what they had. And when you see this, and then I show you the tunnel rams here in detail, you're gonna see why these engines made so much power. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's why on this channel, I wanna be able to do these things. I'm gonna do these two pro stock builds. One here, the three foot four cubic inch that we already know makes over 616 horsepower at eight grand. We're gonna test that with iron heads tunnel ram and two dominators. Then we're gonna put the iron high ports on it and test it again. We're gonna see what those cylinder heads do. This is real similar to the one you're gonna see here that Dino Don had. Check it out. You can see the veins that are welded in there. Now this whole intake's been welded all through here, all through here so they could straighten that because that's what the, the key is for flow. Air does not like to turn corners. It likes as straight as possible. Now, Dino Don had John Kazi working for him. He came in, I think, I forgot when, somewhere in the mid-70s at that point and became his crew chief. You know, they were really tight. And the stories I've been reading on Dino Don, he's an amazing man. And this is not a biography on him. All I'm doing is just kind of reintroducing the Pro Stock Cleveland cylinder heads and intakes to kind of keep going with my channel, with my builds, and... I see that that's really what people want to see. Not Tim playing around with a 409 Cleveland, although that's good stuff. We're going to have a whole nother kind of segue of the channel where I'm going to do this build right here. This is a 1969 Cleveland block. At least that's when it was poured. It's D-O-A-E, J block. So it has oil returns. It's got thicker cylinders, so they say. I don't know. They call it a D block also. Ran one of these for five years at 79 to 8 grand. Never had a bit of problem, no oiling problems. It was a good cylinder block. So I had this thing for over 21 years, been sitting in a corner. I got it from Jim Willett back in 2005 or six, somewhere around there. This is a 51 year old block and I'm bringing it back to life here on this channel, along with some changes with this. I wanna show you what these pro stock Clevelands could do. Cause you hear they make power. I'm gonna show you they make power. So, I'm really pumped about this. You're gonna learn a lot on the intake manifold setup with the tunnel rams that I go through it in detail. Cause I wanna start reaching you know, Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. He is the tunnel ram king and he's doing the mixed up Boss 429 with the Greg Brown hammerhead heads. That's another build. I wanna hook up with these guys. We're gonna do some live chats back and forth. He also is a buddy with David Vizard. I saw a couple tricks that no one's probably even thought about on his channel and I'm gonna incorporate into this block. So I'm gonna do a whole series on putting this block, whether it's a pro stock Cleveland block, or you building one for your 70s Mustang or Cougar, you know, or Torino or pickup, whatever, XB, XY, whatever you got running. So I'm gonna go from the ground up. I'm gonna start doing all the oil mods I wanna do. I wanna put the bronze bushings in here. I don't wanna put in the, the oil gallery restrictors. I don't want to do that. I'm going to do a ton of oil massaging though. I can tell you that. We're going to do what Tricky said with the lifters and cut down the side about three thou to connect those grooves, the oil band with the oil hole. 
I want to do a lot of the drain back areas that you don't look at and you don't see. I want to start this, I want to fill this block all on my channel so you guys can follow along because I get a ton of questions on that. We'll see what this old girl can do, 51 year old piece of iron. She's coming back to life, I'm telling you. So I got this tunnel ram from Dr. Ron. Now this is similar to what you're gonna see in Dino Don's pictures. I'll just show you the inside, how they tried to get the velocity up and direct the airflow. Because once you, once I do that tunnel ram video, I think you're gonna get a whole new perspective on tunnel rams from a porting aspect and from what they had to work with. And that's what I wanna recreate the pro stock era of 1975, 74. When you think about it, Dino Don was the first guy in the sevens. He ran a seven in a funny car back in 68, I wanna say. Um, it was a Cougar, I think it was a Cougar Eliminator. Not the Eliminator Comet funny car. But either way, you guys can get back on me on that. He also was the first in pro stock and ran like a 797, I wanna say, at English Town in pro stock. Now. I read that here in this magazine, October 1978. There's this Futura right here. So this intake manifold you're seeing was probably on that because I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to try to do the 70s because from 70 to 74 is when an HRA, they were in the big block series. That's when the cameras were there. The shotgun, Boss 429 stuff, you know, the, the Hemis, they were the ruling back then. It wasn't until they went to the weight to horsepower ratio, uh, ratio is when the Clevelands came back in to play you know 75 that's when you're gonna that's when the glidden years were power years when he started racing the four borough cleveland iron heads that he modified into high ports so that's what i want to recreate here and show you what they sound like and show you how fast they go we're going to put this fire breathing cleveland's into something i'll have something figured out by then whether it's that fairmont that brad witt wants to hook me up with which i talked to him a short time ago the 40 ford coupe I got a Mustang, 69 Mustang deal I'm trying to work on, and also um, the Cougar. That's going to get done. So it's I want to build this channel and incorporate a lot of information and education in it and bring back this stuff that you're not going to see anymore. I want to hook up with Uncle Tony and do a, like a live web page with or a YouTube channel with him. Do my own. People would like to talk to me. I hope you know we could talk about all kinds of stuff. But that's what I got to try to get this into. So I'm glad you guys are around for the ride. Stay tuned. Glad you stopped by the Drag Boss Garage. Now check out Dino Don's parts. All right, guys, here's Dino Don, the first man in the sevens for Pro Stock and Funny Car back in the day, and John Cozzi working on one of his mills. There's not a lot of pictures of Dino Don's engines. I did put in a picture of this as Bob Glidden's tunnel ram just so you could get a better idea. But you can see he's modified that and put electrical tape to try to hide it. Here's Dino Don's tunnel ram the edelbrock ur19 there's a fitting in between the runners and the plenums i'm not sure what that is if that's a fuel log but here's a picture comparing the two of a stock one on the right and don's modified one on the left that plenum measures two and three quarter inches on these they're one and three quarter one and a half inches you can see the epoxy underneath where they welded it and ported it to straighten it here's looking down the runners it has a plate welded in to help direct the air to fill that port efficiently at 9 and 10,000 RPM. My intake manifold, as I showed you, has that also. And here's a picture of the bottom of the intake. You can see that fitting again. I'm not sure what that is, probably a fuel log. But this head had port fillers in the intakes. You might not see them in these pictures, but this picture shows a lot. Angle milled valve cover rails for the intakes, the epoxy, the port shape, round for the exhaust, and small and square for the intake like the A3 heads, you can see here that they ported these things to the max in the rocker arm area to the point where they had to epoxy it to prevent the leaks and then the rocker arm studs would pull out sometimes because they ran such high spring pressures and high lift cams. These heads were set on kill. Look at the combustion chamber, classic Cleveland. Intake runners all filled with epoxy to straighten it, decrease the volume. This has a port plate, so it may have been for a 9.5 deck. Look at that, Dino Don, right on the high port. And what else you'll see in this picture is also a load bolt. You'll see that. And that goes through the water jacket into the back of the combustion chamber. It's a set screw that puts pressure on the combustion chamber to keep its shape under high RPM and cylinder pressures. Now, coming up is a picture of the cylinder heads themselves. They almost look like A3, which was the first Ford Motorsport aluminum head. 
which was a copy of the high port iron heads, round exhaust ports and that square smaller intake port.